spirit, not just conquer death. He had to conquer death in a human body because death found a way to manifest in human bodies. And so the only way he could set humans free from death manifesting in them was to take their death, absorb it into a human body, and then conquer that same death in a human body in the resurrection. Mm -hmm. And then that resurrection could then declare a spirit or a word to us that if we believed on it, the same spirit that raised Jesus up from the dead bodily could dwell in us and raise us up bodily. Right. But if there wasn't the sacrifice of Jesus, then death would be reigning over people still. Right. Sure. You can't find anybody who didn't die. Yeah. <laughs> well, how did they die then if death wasn't reigning over us? We, we get confused in our theology like this. We'll, we'll have a train of thought that has some truth to it. Um, I speak about the persuasion a lot. And I speak about, well, Adam was separated from God in his thoughts. Mm -hmm. And that was the problem. That is a big part of the problem. But in the day that I only equate the gospel into something in my imagination, then I'm missing the whole other half of it, which is there was death manifesting in a physical body. So sin and death isn't just conquered in our thoughts. It had to actually be conquered in a physical body. And unless it could be conquered in a physical body, there would be nothing for me to have my conscience washed clean from. I couldn't even have anything to believe on. How can I believe that there was resurrection life in a physical body unless it actually manifested in a physical body? How could I believe that death had been conquered in a physical body unless I could actually see the death conquered in a physical body? So... As much as anybody, I'm always talking about our belief system, our belief system, our belief system, our belief system, as the numero uno, numero uno thing to us experiencing life. But if our thoughts of that then equals nothing actually had to happen, it was just in our imagination. We missed it. Yeah. And we're right along the path to getting into massive error. Yeah. Massive error. Then we'll start saying things like, God never wanted Jesus to die mm -hmm. on the cross. God didn't want Jesus to die on the cross in the sense that God didn't need for himself, his own wrath to be satisfied. Mm -hmm. But God most certainly wanted Jesus to die on the cross in the sense that he wanted to set us free from the death that was reigning over us. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a it's period. Right. There's no ands if buts about it. And then we get our vain imaginations up in the scriptures, and we try to bring our own private interpretation to what's going on. And then we quote scriptures in Hebrews that says, um, "Let's just read it. Let's just read them. Yeah. I'll just read it real quick. If you guys bear with me." Where are you going in Hebrews? Um, ten. See, if, if we can't understand why there had to be a death or blood, and we think it had to do with God's anger with man, we'll, we'll, many times our heart will reject that. And because we don't understand, we can't figure out our theology in between, right. we, then we jump to, oh, well, God never desired for Jesus sure. to die. Right. That's the only way we can deal with it, mm -hmm. if we don't understand what really happened. Mm -hmm. So look what Hebrews 10 says. And we'll start with verse 5. In Hebrews 10, it says, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. Sacrifice and offering you didn't desire. Now, what sacrifice and offering is he talking about there? If you understand the context of Hebrews, the author of Hebrews is putting next to each other the sacrifices and offerings in the law of Moses right. and the sacrifice of Jesus. He's comparing the two. And he's trying to persuade these Hebrews to turn away from trying to deal with their sin through the animal sacrifices and instead believe on Jesus as the once for all time sacrifice for sin. So in Hebrews 10, he's making the point of why we should look to the once for all time sacrifice of Jesus instead of the sacrificial animal offerings, mm -hmm. okay? And it, the, the way he makes that point is he says, wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, sacrifice and offerings you did not desire, but a body you hath prepared for me. So now listen, he says, these animal sacrifices, oh, I see now, these animal sacrifices, this is Jesus is talking about. Jesus right. came into the world. At some point, Jesus saw the animal sacrifices, and he said, 
Oh, I see now these sacrifices and offerings you don't desire. But a body you have prepared for me to offer myself for sin. So he says what he doesn't desire, which is right. these animal sacrifices, but what did he desire? The sacrifice of Jesus. That's why it says, but a body you have prepared for me. So he says what he didn't desire, and what did he desire? Jesus to offer himself. Now listen, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Burnt offering is talking about the animal sacrifices. That was one of the main sacrifices that they offered, a burnt offering. So Jesus is saying, oh, I see, you don't desire these burnt offerings and these animal sacrifices for sin. You have no pleasure in them. Now, why did God not have any pleasure in the animal sacrifices? Because they could never remove the death from reigning over us. They could never purge our conscience from the Adam man. They could never bring us back into the presence of God. So God had no pleasure in those things. Then Jesus says, then said I. Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Which was God's will. Mm. When Jesus was talking to God and said, Lord, if there be any other way, but your will. So according to God's will, Jesus offered himself. Look what he says in verse 8. Above when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not, neither had any pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. He's specifically speaking about God having no pleasure in the animal sacrifices, the sacrifices offered by the law. Then said he, Jesus, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first that he may establish the second. So the 